Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. This is a video about the United Kingdom, so you know what that means, team. It's time once again to explain all the differences between the UK, Great Britain, the British Isles, and all that jazz. Yes, I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard this before, as I and many others have covered it in the past, but this could always be someone's first time learning about this. However, if you're an expert on what means what here in Blighty, then by all means, skip ahead to this time in the video. So if you are sticking around to find out how the UK works, then hello, don't worry, we'll have to figure it out at some point. Perhaps the two terms that get confused most often are Great Britain and the United Kingdom. Great Britain is simply a geographic term for this island, which contains the nations of England, Scotland and Wales. The United Kingdom is the country that is made up of these three smaller countries, as well as Northern Ireland over on the island of Ireland. Hence why the UK's full name is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as those two titles encompass all the nations that make up the UK. Of course, in the past, the entirety of Ireland was part of the UK, but that changed as we'll get into. There is also the term the British Isles, and once again, that is just a simple geographical term to cover all this land, including the islands of Ireland and the island of Great Britain, as well as the islands that make up parts of these smaller UK countries, like with the Isle of Wight that is a part of England, the Shetland and Hebrides, which are part of Scotland, and even the Isle of Man, which isn't a part of the UK but is something known as a Crown Dependency. Even the other Crown Dependencies of Jersey and Guernsey are considered part of the British Isles sometimes, even though they are close to France. It's said that this can get all kinds of confusing sometimes sometimes, but there's many charts and maps, including this one by myself, that should help explain things a bit better. So if you were able to follow that and saw that the title of this video mentioned the UK, then you will know we were talking about the smaller countries that make up the larger country of the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. But I know many people don't like to call these countries or nations or anything like that, but that could be a video unto itself. So in this video I'm going to refer to them as the home nations, as that is what they're often referred to as, especially in sports. If this does make you feel angry then please by all means leave your grievances in the comments below. So the UK unto itself is a country, and it's the primary way this nation is handled in global affairs, e.g. it's the UK, not just England or just Scotland in the UN and such. So the UK does have a capital city unto itself, with that being London and England. However, each of its home nations have capitals too, Edinburgh for Scotland, Belfast for Northern Ireland, Cardiff for Wales, and London once again for England. So if London is the capital of the UK, which is a country, and the capital for England too, which is kind of a country, that means that London is one city that is the capital of two different countries. Well, kind of. Once again, you can tell me why I'm wrong down in the comments. And while we have these four cities as the capitals right now, this hasn't always been the case. Other cities within these home nations have been considered the capitals of their respective home nations throughout history in one way or another. So let's not only look into how the modern capital of the UK got their names, but how these ancient capitals got their names too. They won't be looking into all these ancient capitals as the further we go back in history, Great Britain becomes little more than various Celtic tribes and things start to get a little confusing, so we'll just sit some of the more well-known previous capitals of these home nations. The most northern home nation of the United Kingdom is Scotland, and in somewhat central Scotland lies the village of Schoon. Now, while this may look like a pretty unassuming, though picturesque Scottish village with a population of just over 4,000, it was once the capital of the Kingdom of Scotland. Well, kind of. The current village of Schoon is actually a different village to Old Schoon, as the old village was abandoned around the 18th century, and the new village of Schoon built up after that. However, up until the 15th century, Scottish kings were having their coronations in this settlement, and it's from this this old village of Schoon that the Stone of Schoon comes from, which has been used for centuries in the coronation of Scottish, then British, then United Kingdom monarchs. It was even used in the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Where the name of Schoon comes from, however, is uncertain, though it possibly comes from the Pictish language, but we aren't actually sure beyond that. However, I'm sure the name of this former capital has rung a bell in your mind, and that's because it shares its name with a popular baked good here in Britain. Well, the spellings are the same anyway. We don't need to delve into the pronunciation of this food, or in which order cream and jam go on it. Are there any connection between the village of Schoon and the food of scones? Well, scones are considered by some to be a Scottish creation. However, as we aren't too sure where the name of the village comes from, we can't really tell. Though we have some theories on where the name for the food comes from. One idea is that it comes from the Dutch schoenblood, meaning bread, or the Scots word skarn, meaning flat. 
as initially these scones were flat, so there probably isn't a connection. Still, I probably wouldn't say no to having a scone in Schoon. Of course, however, Schoon didn't stay as the capital of Scotland, as now we have Edinburgh as the capital of the home nation. It seems the first thing to be built in this city was Edinburgh's famous castle atop a large rock, and because of this, the city's first ever name was actually Castle Rock, though that name didn't stick around. We have talked about the birth suffix before and that it means fort slash castle. It was only later in history the pronunciation changed to Burg, so Edinburgh was Edin's fort. Though who or what was Edin? Well, this is thought to be a corruption of Edwin, possibly referring to the 7th century king of Northumbria, King Edwin, so perhaps this city should be called Edwinborough. The capital of Northern Ireland is of course Belfast, while the capital of just Ireland is Dublin. In the past, all of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. It was only in 1921 in the partition of Ireland that the Republic of Ireland became its own nation, and Northern Ireland stayed part of the UK. It was here that Belfast became the capital of Northern Ireland. Before this, when all of Ireland was part of the UK, Dublin was its capital, and this name of Dublin comes from the Irish Gaelic Dúil an Lynn, meaning Black Pool, as the waters of the river that run through the city get rather murky and, well, black. However, with the partition of Ireland, it meant that the new Northern Ireland had lost its capital city. This meant that Belfast had to become the capital of Northern Ireland, and it is to this day. Like with Dublin, Belfast is an Irish Gaelic word too, coming from corruption of the words Bealefelster, which means mouth of the sandy fort. Which makes sense, as if you look at a map of Northern Ireland, you'll see that the city is built by the mouth of the Belfast Loch. Wales is perhaps the home nation of the UK with the most unique history. It only became a separate entity after England and Scotland and joined together to form the initial United Kingdom. Before that, it was just part of England, hence why the Welsh flag isn't represented on the Union Jack, or why it hasn't got land after its name, like the other home nations of the UK. There's obviously way more to it than that, but we won't go into the details here. Though there was a reason the Welsh wanted to be a separate nation to the English, and that's because they very much have their own culture, history, language, and rulers. In fact, one of Wales' most well-known rulers was Owain Glundur, between 1404 and 1415. He resided in the small town of Mahachlef, and because of this, this small town is sometimes seen as the ancient capital of Wales. And if you couldn't tell from my awful pronunciation, this name is Welsh, and it's thought to possibly be interpreted as a place with a beautiful slope, which probably refers to the hills around the town. Of course, Cardiff would eventually overtake it as the capital of the land. The name of Cardiff is thought to be an English corruption of the Welsh Cala Taff, which means fort on the Taff, with the Taff being a river that runs through the city, and the fort most likely being Cardiff Castle. And despite this being a name imposed on them by the English, they seem to have adopted it, as the Welsh name for the city is no longer Cala Taff, but Cala Dir. So this name is a Welsh corruption of an English corruption of the original Welsh name. Language is very silly sometimes. Though perhaps the home nation that has had the most different capital cities during its history is of course the biggest and most populated one. England. As I mentioned earlier, there have been a ton of cities that have supposedly been the capital of England, or at least the capital of a certain tribe slash kingdom that resides in modern day England, so we really won't be looking into all of these former capital cities, but some of the more interesting and renowned ones, starting with Colchester. It's probably not fair to even call Colchester the capital of England. While the modern city is in modern day England, when this city was founded, the concept of England didn't even exist. And that's because the city was initially founded all the way back in 43 AD by the Romans, set up to be the capital of not England, but of Roman Britain. When the Romans founded this city, they give the name Camulodunum, with this name meaning the stronghold of Camulos, with Camulos being a god of Celtic mythology. The modern name of Colchester, however, is debated. However, I read that the cult of Colchester comes from Colony, as it was the first Roman colony in Britain. And of course, the Chester suffix is Latin too, meaning fort. This city would stay as the Roman capital of Britain until it was infamously raided and destroyed by Boadicea in 60-61 AD. And here, the Romans moved their capital to Londinium. And while Londinium is still the capital of England, there were some other capitals in between, perhaps most noticeably being Winchester. It was here that the King of Wessex, Alfred the Great, held court and declared it his capital in 871 AD, and from then Winchester has proudly declared itself the ancient capital of England. We have that Chester suffix again, but what about the win part? Well, it seems that this comes from the pre-Celtic term Venta, which means favoured place, which makes sense as Alfred favoured it enough to make it his capital, and somehow over time Venta became Win. Another city that was once the capital of England was Oxford. This is when Charles I was banished from London by Oliver Cromwell. 
Oxford University was a strong supporter of the royal family, so gave him shelter there. And in Oxford, Charles I declared it the capital of England. We see the Ford suffix in many English place names, and it refers to water, specifically somewhere in a river with shallow enough water that you can cross it with ease. It seems Oxford was built on a ford. Though what about the ox part? Well that quite literally comes from oxen, who I guess would have been native or farmed on the land when this city was named. Of course though, London would eventually end up as the capital of not just England, but the UK as a whole. So where does the name of London come from? Well obviously it comes from the Roman name Londinium, but as to where the Romans got that name, things become a bit more mysterious. We have all kinds of theories as to where the name came from. One theory is that the Romans crafted it from the Celtic Lawanida, meaning wild flowing river, referring to the Thames. Another theory is that the name derives from a local Celtic chief, and another theory is that it comes from a pre-Roman Roman king of the land called King Lud. Despite being one of the most well-known cities on the planet, its name is nowhere near as well-known. The capitals of the UK were suggested by Dan Hibbard, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as the name explains patron saint of the capitals of the UK. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video. And you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to so update all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Jeremy at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.